gunshot, look at the bladder on on your left top, gunshot you could see and a little filling defect on the bladder, it is not intravesical fortunately. And on the right side, peritoneal rupture with contrast in the extraperitoneal perivascular structure. And in the one left bottom side, you find multiple filling defects due to blood clots in the bladder, due to injury of the kidney and then blood hemorrhage seeps into the bladder and forms clots. Now we come to inflammations and infections, initially studied by VP, lobar nephronia, pilate cystica, papillary necrosis, acute pyelonephritis, although sometimes it is contraindicated, chronic pyelonephritis, renal abscess, emphysematous pyelonephritis, pyonephrosis, xanthogranulates, pyelonephritis, tuberculosis, fungal infections. We do IVP and plays a major role as an initial screening method. Let us take chronic pyelonephritis. What are the radiological features? Particle atrophy, it could be focal or universally contracted. Irregular outline clefts in the cortex, focal scarring, particularly in the upper pole, compensatory hypertrophy of the unaffected segment, rest of the kidney, clubbing of the calyces. These are some of the radiological features of a chronic pyelonephritis. And then earlier we used to do nephrotomogram, which depicts better the calyceal abscesses, particularly on the right side, chronic renal abscess in the left IVP film. Again, to show chronic pyelonephritis, IVP, look at the right side, kidney is contracted, irregular, multiple calcification. And the left side is a, again a nephrotomogram, which we do not do now, CT and MRI and scintigraphy do not have to do nephrotomogram. CT has replaced the conventional tomogram. Because we have to think of the past and remember the past, I am showing you the nephrotomogram. Tumefactive xanthogram limit is pyelonephritis, large mass with staghorn type of calculus. In this case, CT may be indicated. Just IVP does not help. You may suspect, but does not really outline the entire picture. Tuberculosis of the urinary tract for years we have depended upon KUB and IVPs. Calcification of the adrenals, lymph node calcifications on KUB, osseous spines or sacral leg joint tuberculosis you can find and correlate with the IVP findings, calcification of the kidney, putty kidney, calcification of the ureters and bladder, seminal vesicles, and bastard. All these you can find in a plain, simple film of the abdomen. Look at these two films. One on the left, tuberculosis pyonephrosis of left kidney. Look at the large, the ring-like calcification. These are calcifications around the dilated calyces. Sometimes they represent also Caseous material with calcifications, limb. And on the on your right side, you find the TB, putty right kidney, contracted, homogeneous type of calcifications in the kidney. It is Dr. Merchant Suleiman who has reported extensively on tuberculosis of the genital urinary tract. Indian Journal of Radiology can refer, 1993. Multi study carried out. 1977 under ICMR because tuberculosis rampant incidence is they found to be 10.34 percent in patients with urinary tract troubles. Again, look at the film calcification of vas deferens and seminal vesicles due to tuberculosis. It should not be mistaken for what? We have seen earlier bladder calcifications and then KUV. Cystosomiasis. 23 year old female with hematuria, look at the minor change in the right lower calcial system, just a deflection and a slight blush of the contrast is the early manifestation of tuberculosis. Again, to go back, nephrotomograms may help to note the size of the pelvis, the shape of the ureters, configuration of the kidneys and ureters. IVP, again to repeat calcial adulteration. Papillary necrosis is another early radiological sign that you can detect by IVP. Irregular calyx, cavitation, strictures of the infundibular, mass lesion, 
grouping lily appearance because of the mass deflecting the calcifications auto effect. IVP non functioning calcific left kidney in this particular film changes in the right ureter dilated urinary tract ureters particularly and look at the bladder a thimble shaped contracted bladder typical of tuberculosis. Again two IVP cases TB right sacroiliac joint film on the left side soft tissue mass arrows point out pushing the ureter and it is super close to the sacroiliac joint, but there are some changes in the urinary tract that is how you correlate. And the same thing on the right, right side, old heel super close to the spine and any changes in the urinary tract you attribute for super close first rather than other type of infections. Papillary necrosis, what are the causes? Analgesic abuse, common particularly in western countries including Australia, infection, ischemia, renal vein thrombosis. These are some of the causes, particularly in our country is diabetes and infection. Papillary necrosis, again nephrotomogram, changes of papillary necrosis, cystinuria. The ball and cap is one of the signs seen in papillary necrosis. Again another nephrotomogram demonstrates papillary necrosis because these nephrotomograms we do not see nowadays. It was at that time, it is innovative, cheaper and cost effective. Pornicial abnormalities are particularly evident. Ring sign, sloughed papilla, extra calcial contrast with clubbing. Again papillary necrosis, the tubular blush and dilatation of the tubular use you could see. This is ureteritis cystic, a classical film, multiple round lucent mucosal filling defects, defects along the ureter, typical of a pilatus cystic. Nephrogram, what are the findings? In uh, how does nephrogram help in obstructive and non obstructive conditions? Hypertension, arterial stenosis, venous thrombosis, acute renal failure. Chronic obstructive changes, what are the findings in IVP? Negative pilogram, you could see lucencies, calcial crescents, dilated papillary ducts bubble nephrogram, ball pile, these are all some of the changes that you see in IVP, particularly if you take nephrographic phase. Again refer to Pollock and others for obstructive uropathy and other changes. Balloon compression of the ureters, as I told you earlier, compress the ureters at the pelvis so that we can visualize the entire proximal ureter and calcial system. Visualization congenital PVG obstruction. I mean on your right side in the left renal pelvis. Congenital megacalysis and in the literature in pediatric radiology literature you can find several articles. Look at the dilated calyces, but the infant fibula and the pelvis are normal, just the dilated calyces. Calyclus disease and obstructions, obstructive nephrogram showing uniform haziness and opacity on the right side, the 20 minute film. That means delayed nephrogram and then two different cases IVPs small erythropelvic junction calculus with hydro erythronephrosis in the right side, small left ureteral calculus in the left IVP with hydronephrosis. How IVP helps in calculus disease and then if it is marked hydronephrosis you find crescents, look at the negative pilogram, all that lucency you find on the left kidney is dilated calyces and pelvis. Two year old child, hydronephrosis, note bubbles or crescents on the left side. On the right side, there is contrast indicating there is hydronephrosis, hydro ureter, hydronephrosis also. But on the left kidney, you see only the crescents and bubbles indicating that there is marked hydronephrosis with a delayed function on that side. 25 year old male with urinary tract problems, IVP is taken as the cone view, a 20 minute film, hydronephrosis, dilated calyces, this is what is called ball type of pilogram. And then this IVP, poor visualization on the left side in a patient with hypertension, we used to do hypertensive series and take 
half a minute, one minute, three minutes, five minute films, a series of films to know the delayed function of the kidney that is probably a cause of hypertension. Poor visualization, Doppler and CT angio are essential today to study renovascular hypertension. Nobody does hypertensive program today, hypertensive studies. One on your left side, young woman with urinary problems, bilateral pelvic urethral obstruction with hydronephrosis, nothing specific about it. Whereas on the right side, 18 month old child, passing scanty urine, bilateral hydro nephrosis, and indicating that there must be obstruction at the bladder level or at the urethral level. Bilateral hydronephrosis again, hydronephrosis due to urethral valves. One on your right side shows almost simulating the conventional urogram. Look at the, there's not much difference in appearances, except here you give contrast and radiation. There, MR urogram for comparison. There also you may give contrast, but it's not as toxic as IVP contrast. Enlarged prostate with the left hydroeurotronephrosis on your left picture. And on the right, uterine mass. These are all showing, you know, the extrinsic pressures producing hydroeurotronephrosis, either unilateral or bilateral. Parts of the bladder, left side hydroeur, look at the irregular filling defect involving the, not only the bladder, but probably the urethrovesical orifice producing hydronephrosis on the left side. Retroperitoneal fibrosis producing hydroeurotronephrosis. Look at the stenosis of the ureter due to the retroperitoneal fibrosis. Here, retrocaval ureter. Again, compare the IVP with MR urogram. Beautiful picture with MR urogram. You know, not involved in radiation except it's costly. You get a picture like this. The monstrate, retrocaval ureter. Now we come to neoplasms, whether benign or malignant. Routine IVP misses many small neoplasms. In plain films, if it is big with calcification, you may sus suspect malignancy, but uh, small ones, either plain films or IVP, you can easily miss. And then two different IVPs, carcinoma of the right kidney, note the displacement of the pelvis and calcial system and the irregularity of the infundibulum uh, because of the space occupying infiltrative mass. Again, just the pelvic film, IVP shows carcinoma of the bladder with a large irregular filling defect in the bladder. Fortunately, the ureters are not involved in this particular case. And now there is another entity called reflux, not reflex, reflux nephropathy and it depends upon various grades, particularly in children. What are the radiological findings? Small kidney, aliceal clubbing. Parenchymal scarring, it could be segmental, particularly the superior pole of the kidney. Predominantly polar, chronic atrophic, non obstructive pyelonephritis, high pressure vesico urethral reflux, infected and non infected. Look at the cone down view of the IVP film, reflux atrophy, note the thin cortex and slightly dilated calyces. Again, one on your left side, vesico ureteral reflex on the right side, denoting the hydroeurotral nephrosis grade 4. And on your right side, uh, this is the cysto urethrography showing the dilated posterior urethra, not to be mistaken, part of the neck of the bladder, with valves, demonstrating the valves. Could be a membrane, could be a valve. In fact, Intravenous urography is pushed out today by ultrasonography, color Doppler, CT, CT angiography, MRI and MR angiography, catheter angiography and nuclear medicine. Of course, of late, PET scan also plays a major role in kidney neoplasms, etc. Now the digital revolution, almost every other conventional X-ray equipment are converted to DICOM digital imaging and communications in the medicine. What are the advantages of digital radiography? Fast and efficient examination procedures. Outstanding image quality resolution, excellent. High throughput, less radiation dose. 
as compared with uh, routine x-rays and cost savings too. Now, today what is out, what is in, what next? What is out, we have already told you about the oblique views of chest, we are not taking any chest, typical laboratory views, conventional tomography, nephrotomography is out, pneumoencephalography is out, myelography is out, bronchography is out and in the urinary tract, cryptoperitoneal air encephalation, nobody does, it is criminal to do. Hypertensive IUP series, we do not do. Ionic high osmolar contrast is the contrast that should be used. What is in? Digital and computer radiography with PACs. Reduced number of IVPs and replaced by CT. More of sonography and Doppler. CT and today we have got multi detector CT angiography, MR urography, MR angiography, nuclear medicine, SPECT, PET CT, hybrid and molecular imaging, PET and MR urography. And in the literature, you see radiology 99. Nine aim is said epitaph or urogram. And in our own Indian literature, Anirudh Kohli, editorially he has written, as the time come to write the epitaph or the intravenous urography, what do you think? Future, as long as equity does not exist and a big gap persists between the urban and rural, between the rich and poor, conventional and IVP studies should continue. That is our philosophy. If necessary, the patient may be referred to a tertiary care center for further advanced investigations and interventional procedures. That depends upon the findings you get on the initial ultrasonography and IVP studies. IVP says, I will not entirely disappear. As barium studies decrease and they have not disappeared, skull radiographs have decreased and not disappeared. So, the number of IVPs may decrease, but not ready for an epitaph, writing an epitaph. That is the philosophy today and future, we do not know. But depending upon the past, present and future, we in a certain, no, learn certain lessons from the past and what are the current trends and what we can expect in the future.